Hey game makers! Do, do you like battle cameras? I like battle cameras. Today we're gonna learn about battle cameras, and it will be awesome! Not just battle cameras though, we're also going to be looking at how to code in dynamic skill attacks. Do you perhaps want your game to have an omni slash attack? A dragoon with a jump skill maybe? Perhaps you just want the camera to follow your characters around and make it a little less default. Whatever your reason, that's why we're here. Just be aware, as these require a lot of code, they can be a little bit of information overload if you're new at it. First, you're going to need these four plugins. The Yep Battle Engine Core, and the Yep X Act Seek Pack, Action Sequence Pack, 1, 2, and 3. The Battle Core itself handles a bunch of different battle-related info that you can customize. I'm currently using version 1.14, as it's the most recent at the time of this video. I actually just updated them before this recording. If you need these plugins, or want the latest versions of any of the OnFly plugins, you can get them at this link, which will also be in the description. Now, regarding the action sequence plugins. The first one controls basic functions, the second controls visual functions, and the third controls the epic battle camera. This is important, as the help files on these give you all the codes that you need to make these work. Just so we don't have to keep coming back to the plugins menu, I've copied these into a notepad file, but you can also look at the website I mentioned earlier to find everything you need. Now, I have a bunch of other plugins added in, but they aren't really related in any way to the battle sequence, so you can ignore them. Before we start, let's take a look at the default attack animation. Kinda default, right? Let's just kinda stand here and swing our swords. Yay! <laughs> okay, now to start coding. Quick note, you can do this for both skills and items. For today though, we're just going to create something super simple. Basically, when the character does a normal attack, they run up to the enemy, attack them, and run back. With some added camera zoomy goodness. Let's head up to the database. The code itself is going to go under the note field on the skill we're using. In this case, number one, the basic attack attack. I've already made up the code we're going to use, so we're going to go through it and see what it's supposed to do. For this, the first thing we type is setup action. You can read all about this in Action Sequence 1's help file, but the simple version is, this stuff happens before you attack. In this example, this section will be used to camera zoom things. Now we have display action. This will show the action name in the battle log. I'm pretty sure I have one of my plugins set to not show the battle log for default attacks, but we're putting it in anyway for good measure. This also seems to prevent the characters from not attacking immediately after the other, but I'm not sure if that's actually related or not. The following part is a little bit complicated. We have this bit in case someone in our party has a ranged weapon. Because, well, you wouldn't want to run up to an enemy and just kind of hit them with a bow, right? It says, if user dot attack motion, double bracket, exclamation mark, equals equals, and then missile in quotes. I'll be honest, I saw this in a different code and had to kind of figure out what it did from there, but it seems to mean if the user's attack motion is X, do this, else do something different. In Sequence Plugins 2's help file, it has a list of motion types. In this specific case, we're using these to basically tell the game that if the user is using a specific style of weapon, it will do one specific sequence. However, this can and is most frequently used to make your characters take a specific stance or graphic like chanting, victory, guarding, etc. In this instance, we're going to tell the code that if the character's attack motion is missile, it will zoom the camera in on the target. This, oddly enough, will be used if the character has a melee weapon. I tried both attack and thrust, but missile seemed to be the only one I could get to actually do what I wanted. So for missile, which is melee weapons for some reason, we'll have the camera focus on the target. We're going to zoom in to 150% here. The number beside the percentage is how many frames it'll take. In this case, we've set it to 20. I also added in a camera offset, which will move the screen slightly to the right by 50 pixels, just as a purely aesthetic thing. Basically, I want my heroes to clearly be visibly attacking. Now, the else command. This tells the game that if the user isn't using a melee stance, to have the camera focus on the user so we can see who's actually attacking. And we're going to set the zoom on that to 250. To really make sure we know who's attacking, again at 20 frames. We're also going to wait by typing wait in the frame amount. This will make sure that the next part doesn't start until after the wait command is done, for X amount of frames. Next, we'll focus the camera on the target again. Set the zoom back to 150 and the camera offset so that the enemies aren't centered. That's all for this part, so make sure to add end at the end. <laughs> this bit here is kind of optional. Immortal targets, true. 
This kind of makes your targets immortal. But Echo, why would I want my monster to be immortal? Well, say you had an Omni Strike attack that hit a billion quadrillion times. How silly would it look if the monster just kind of died halfway through? This will make it so the monsters won't quote unquote die before the skill is completed. With that all written, let's close off setup action by rewriting setup action, except this time with a slash in front of it. So far, the character runs up to the monster, or zooms in on the character and then the monster if they're using a ranged weapon, and the monster becomes immortal. Now we get to the actual whack the baddies part, right? Target action. If you want more info on it, search for it in the action sequence pack one help. For attacking the monster, we're going to use the same else setup we had from the first half, except for playing with the epic camera, we're going to be moving our user to the target. Next to move user target, we have front and 20 written. This will make our melee characters run to the front of the enemy. 20 again is the frame count, so how long it'll take them to do that. The list of movement commands is located in action sequence pack 2's help. Under else, instead of having our ranged characters run to the monsters, we'll use perform start to have them just do the basic step forward. Now, damage time! We're going to put a wait for movement to, you guessed it, wait for the characters to finish doing what they're doing. There are several other wait type of commands, and you can find those under action sequence pack one. Now, remember how I said we could use those motion commands to make our character stance change? We're doing that now. We're going to set their motion to attack, and set it to the user. If you're using a spell, you'd likely want to use something like skill or chant instead. But for now, we're just hitting things so attack works. We're going to put in another wait command for 10 frames, so that there's a slight delay between when the characters attack and when the animation shows up. You can probably guess by now, attack animation target means play the animation on the enemy. And then wait for animation to wait for it to finish. Next bit is kind of important. Action effect refers to the actual visible numbers of the damage or healing being dealt. If you don't have this in, it won't show you doing any damage. We're then just going to add in a nice little wait for animation and wait for movement command since the numbers are going to show and the character is going to run back to its original position. We'll wait 5 frames extra so the player themselves has enough time to process what the heck just happened. At the very end, let's close this off with a slash target action. To recap, our melee fighters will run towards the enemy, swing their weapons at them, look like they're actually attacking, and then run back. All with lots of camera following. Our ranged fighters will be zoomed in on, step forward, zoom into the enemies and attack, then zoom out and finish. Let's copy this entire bunch of code and paste it into a text note box. Make sure to click OK and let's test this out in battle. And there you go! Your team can now kick butt in a slightly more graphically interesting way. Now, there are probably a bunch of different ways to do what I just did with these plugins. So if you want to do something cool like this, make sure you play around with it to get exactly what you want. If you want more battle sequence examples, I have a link in the description to a super awesome forum for posting your own sequences, several of which were used in this video and my Let's Make a Game series as examples. So super thank yous to those who posted them on there. You're all totally way awesome and way better at this than me. <laughs> and your requests are welcome, so if you have any, ask me in the comments. Until next time, see you later, gamers!